Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to look at something I've been wanting to look at for a while and am now finally getting around to. VNC viewers for MS-DOS. And I've happened to find two of them. The first one is called DOS VNC and the second one is called VNC Viewer for 8086. What we're going to do today is look at these on real hardware and virtual hardware, and then I'll give you my outtakes and feedback after that. So, without further ado, let's go. The first program we're going to look at is DOS VNC, and this is a DOS viewer for VNC. Imagine that. Anyway, this particular application was written quite some time ago. You can see here that this web page is postmarked 1999 and there is source code and binaries available for it. I did try to build the source code but didn't have all the resources I need. Anyway, this is a neat little program. It's pretty cool that it will run with less than one megabyte of RAM, allegedly, and I have found that to be true. And it does use the Waterloo TCP or Watt TCP libraries fundamentally, as well as the Allegro graphics libraries. So let's have a look at DOS VNC on real hardware. The first thing I need to do is load a packet driver, as you can see me doing here. And then from there, I'm going to go to the DOS VNC directory, and we're going to have a look at the TCP configuration file. In here, we want to set an IP address for an unused IP on your network, as well as a net mask, and I also like to set a name server so we can access the servers by name. Cool. So with that, it's as simple as VNC view followed by the network name of the device colon zero for VNC. And then from there, you can put in your password. And here it is in 640 by 480 in all of its glory. I'll go ahead and launch a command shell here so we can see what that looks like. And the quality's not too bad, not too bad. We can do a listing and see what's there. Now I'll be really daring and load a web browser where we actually have graphical animation or otherwise, and we can see what this looks like. I'll just go ahead and navigate to google.com. And what you'll notice here is that the animation is drawing itself over and over with some choppiness, but that's not uncharacteristic for any VNC connection. What is different, though, is you pretty much have no control over the I.O. while this is happening, so I'm struggling to close the tab, but I'm eventually victorious. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Let's have a look at some of the graphics modes in VNC Viewer. So you can see there are some modes that you can set, but I didn't have a whole lot of luck setting other modes, and that's why we're demoing this at 640 by 480 When I change the mode, it kicks me back to a DOS prompt. So now let's have a look at running VNC View on another PC. This is my Gateway 486 DX266, and I'm trying to load it up here, and it'll go ahead and ask us for a password. We can put that in, and let's see what happens. It loads up, and lo and behold, we get a stack exception. So this doesn't work so well. It looks like a SIG SIG V page fault. So I believe this is the Allegro graphics libraries, and I did try tweaking some different settings, but in the end, I was not victorious. So next up, we'll have a look at DOS VNC on VirtualBox. I'm booting up my virtual machine here. From there, I will load a mouse driver and a packet driver if I can eventually get it typed right. And it looks like I will be victorious. From there, we can go to the floppy disk that I have the VNC viewer on and try to connect to my sound pie, which is one of my Raspberry Pis. I guess I didn't introduce that earlier. That's what that is. Cool, put in the password and wow, this looks pretty good. So I feel like we're getting a slight performance improvement by actually using the faster virtualized system over my Pentium 233 that we were looking at earlier. Let's be daring once again and launch a web browser. And what I did notice is I had the same IO problems once things got rolling, but I'll go ahead and launch Google here and we can navigate to it. And we will see that it displays just about as well as it did on the DOS machine that was real. And once again, my IO is locked, but uh, <laughs> with some fighting, I was able to get out. Next, let's have a look at VNC Viewer for 8086. 
And this is extremely alpha. This is actually bundled with FreeDOS, I believe. What's nice about this though, is it should run on an 8086 system, assuming that you've got a graphic capable video card, which wow, this supports even CGA. So that's pretty cool. So first let's have a look at VNC viewer for 8086 on real hardware. Real simple, your configuration is very similar to what we saw before. It uses Watt TCP style configuration. And here it is loaded. Notice it's all grayscale. That's because I think the color modes have not been introduced into this alpha version of the software. But it does perform somewhat well, except for the fact that, well, the backspace key doesn't seem to work. Neither does the enter key. So I'm kind of stuck in a terminal here, but uh, at least the mouse works so we can close it. Let's launch a web browser and we're going to have similar problems. We can type google.com, but then we have to click on the mouse to go and search it. And we'll see what the performance looks like once it loads here. And it's not bad. It's actually a little bit better than in color, though there definitely is that typical lag that you have over VNC. Control C getting you out of the program and back to the command prompt and your video mode is cursed. It's just the way that it is, unfortunately. Uh, I'm missing my cursor. It seems to have put us in a strange mode, but I guess that's nothing a reboot won't fix. Next, let's have a look at VNC Viewer for 8086 in VirtualBox. And I actually built it from source. I thought that would be a cool thing to do. We can launch it much like we did on the DOS machine. And oops, I forgot to load my packet driver. So we'll load the mouse driver and we'll go ahead and load the packet driver as well. And then from there, we can go ahead and load the VNC viewer, once again, pointing to my sound pie and put in our password and there it is. So performance is good, even a little better than what we saw elsewhere. Pretty cool. So there you have it. Two DOS VNC viewers, both of which fit on a single floppy disk, which is pretty cool. As we saw, both of these viewers had their own issues and limitations. However, fortunately, the source code is available and I think some improvements could be made. But it's still pretty neat that we can take on and remotely control a modern computer like this little Raspberry Pi using a VNC viewer in MS-DOS. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when that new content is available. If you liked what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. And leave any comments below. Give me your thoughts on the video. What you thought about VNC viewers in MS-DOS. As always, it's been great having you along for the journey. And I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.